El Festival Ecos Urbanos tuvo su primera edición en septiembre de 2015 por iniciativa de los compositores y artistas sonoros Eric Pérez Segura y Hugo Solís García, con el apoyo del Tecnológico de Monterrey. A lo largo de estos años se han presentado conciertos y eventos en los diferentes campus del Tecnológico de Monterrey en la región Ciudad de México, en la Fonoteca Nacional, el Centro de Cultura Digital, el Centro Nacional de las Artes, entre otros lugares. A lo largo de estos años, el festival ha pasado de ser un festival de música electrónica experimental a ser un festival que además incluye arte sonoro, obras audiovisuales y arte transmedia. Se han presentado más de 100 obras de artistas internacionales de 15 países diferentes seleccionadas por convocatoria. También se han incluido proyectos desarrollados por alumnos del Tecnológico de Monterrey. El festival ha contado con la participación de artistas internacionales tales como Jason Freeman, Juan Pampín, Stephen Pope, Jeff Treviño, Rob Hamilton y en la edición del año pasado, John Shawning, pionero en la investigación de la síntesis de sonido. Todos ellos impartiendo conferencias y talleres tanto a la comunidad del Tecnológico de Monterrey como al público en general. Agradecemos al Festival Virtual Inc. Monterrey y al Laboratorio Arte AC por el apoyo brindado para que el festival de este año pudiera llevarse a cabo. Thank you everybody to be here. This is Festival Ecos Urbanos. This is the 2020 edition. And today we have with us Stephen Travis Pope, our international guest. He's an award-winning composer, filmmaker, computer scientist, and social activist based in Santa Barbara, California. He's currently active as a software development contractor and intellectual property expert through FastLab. From 1995 to 2010, he was affiliated with UC Santa Barbara, working in the Department of Music, the Department of Computer Science, and the Graduate Program in Media Arts and Technology. Before that, he lived in San Francisco Bay Area for a decade, working at Xerox, Stanford Karma, and UC Berkeley Cinemat. His music and video compositions are released through Heaven Everywhere Media. Stephanie is also a practicing uh, Quaker, a conscientious of objection counselor, a trained Reiki practitioner, and a workshop facilitator with the Alternatives to Violence Project in state and federal prisons. So I, with you, you have Stephen Travis Pope. Stephen, welcome, and it's a pleasure to have you here again. Thank you, Eric, and thank you for the generous invitation. Um, I wish I could address you all in Spanish, but uh, I, I'm grateful that you are letting me continue in English. I'd like to share my screen and then go through a, a quick presentation about the piece that you're going to be seeing uh, this evening. So the, the piece is called Secrets, Dreams, Faith, and Wonder. And what you're going to be seeing tonight is the shorter version. It's a piece in five movements and the short version has one section from each of the movements. Um, but I'll, I'll be talking a little bit about the here, some background, talk about the liturgy of it, talk about the individual pieces, and then quickly talk about uh, some of the tools and techniques that I used. Uh, these slides, by the way, are on my website, so you can see uh, if you want to look at them later. I'm going to skip some like the slides about my background I've been composing since the 70s and uh, et cetera. The piece Secret Streams, Faith and Wonder has the subtitle, A Mass for the New Millennium. I started it in the year 2000 on a sabbatical and decided to write a mass. And kind of to follow the flow of the Catholic mass, but with new texts and with new messages. And the idea was to make a mass that was as uplifting and had the, what I always loved, the, the flow of energy of the Catholic mass, but have it not be explicitly Christian or Buddhist or Taoist, but to have it be universal. I worked on it for 18 years, and we'll talk about why, um, but the five movements have these titles that you see. And it's just an accident at the end that it turned out that the five movements titles are in five different languages. Uh, 
since I'm speaking to people in Mexico, I assume that most of you are familiar with Catholicism, but let me remind you at least that the Mass has a very long and very colorful history, and that there are very many different things you can get out of it, or many different things that people have said it represents, from just the community coming together, or the community sharing their beliefs, or having an experience of something mystical. Um, or as a Quaker, we talk about the continuing revelation that we come together so that God can actually keep revealing the truth to us. So there are many different ideas of what the Mass is for and what it means. Also, the organization of the service, what, what texts we use, has changed a lot. It was almost a thousand years between 416 and 1551 that it was just very different and it was developing. And as late as the 18th century, composers were adding new texts. So things like the Dies Irae or the Benediction, those have all changed what scripture texts we use, what the Mass actually consists of. In Secret Streams, Faith and Wonder, it follows more or less a traditional Mass, that the first movement is called Jerusalem Secrets, and it plays the role of the Kyrie. If you're not familiar, you normally start the Mass by saying you're sorry, by acknowledging your, uh, your faults and your sins, and by saying God has the right to be angry. So that the text of Kyrie is literally, Lord have mercy upon us. And the other texts that have been used for the opening part were equally dark. Then you normally have a reading of the Old Testament or the New Testament, but something that is sort of your shared teaching. Uh, then you would normally have the creed. You'll notice in my case, I put the creed after the celebration. And then at the last part is normally the benediction, which literally just means the good word, right? If, if you remember, the, there was also a text that was used historically called Ite Misa Est, which literally just means go away, the Mass is over. Um, so I, I, I sang many Masses when I was a music student in Austria, which is, of course, very Catholic. And so I grew to love the Mass and wanted to write my own. I'm not going to talk about all of the history, but as I said, it was 18 years of writing the music, and then by accident, the first three pieces that were performed as music only, in each cases, a friend of mine who was a visual artist came and said, may I make a film to go with this? So it was, it was very magical and kind of random <laughs> that it became a film rather than just being a musical piece. And so for the five pieces of music, they are also very different in terms of the, the source materials that they use. And the videos are by different video artists. So again, going through the development, which I'll skip most of. And then even in, in the 19 teens, after the initial screenings, we did re-editing, remastering, etc. So what's important is that the guiding principles of the music composition were driven by the fact that this is a mass, that it has to have a ritual component and a mystical component. So uh, it really, I, I was very aware that I was dealing with something that was supposed to be sacred, even if I wasn't using texts from the Bible. In fact, I was using the voices, not just the texts, but the voices of Martin Luther King and Mohandas Gandhi. So I felt even dealing with these materials that it was extremely important. I was touching something holy, trying to set, set music to the voice of Martin Luther King and Mohandas Gandhi. Um, so the deep bass registers were very prevalent and the darkness in the videos was very prevalent. I also had this experience in 1999 of working alongside a Canadian composer called Wendy Bartley, who, did what was called intuitive composition, that she would just sit with sounds and try to figure out which of these is right from my intuition. 
not theoretically, not from the algorithm. And I remember this quote from Joseph Campbell, who said, I guess you can read it, but those who have heard the rhythms and hymns of the angels will try to recite those hymns in such a way that the angels will be attracted. So for me, a lot of the guiding energy was always to try to figure out what will put the listener in a state that the angels will be attracted. Now I'd like to quickly discuss the five movements and just talk a little bit about the texts that are used and the sound materials that are used. Uh, Jerusalem Secrets, which has the subtitle Lamentatio, is based on samples from a very famous piece from Ernst Krzyzenek, an Austrian composer who wrote it during World War II. And it was a 12-tone piece that was a setting of the Lamentations of the Prophet Jeremiah from the Bible. And I wanted to cross this and use it together with music from Brian Eno and David Burns' My Life in the Bush of Ghosts, which is a very groundbreaking uh, record. So I took the Latin texts from Krenek and Arabic and English texts from Bush of Ghosts and mixed them using sampling together with synth drones and percussion and bird samples. And uh, kind of as a collage made a piece using several different tools, but it was not, this was one of the easiest ones to make because I knew I wanted to follow the text and have three different sections. And so it kind of came together quickly. Uh, the first piece that I actually did was the second movement, which is called Le Songe de la Paix, uh, which is French for their dream of peace. And it's a setting of a text by Martin Luther King Jr. called A Time to Break the Silence. And many people refer to this text as Beyond Vietnam. Uh, it's ironic that it's a speech that he delivered exactly one year before he was murdered. Um, and for this, I wanted to make the simplest music that would let you listen to Dr. King's voice. So it has by far the most text of any of the movements because it's about four minutes of text of this speech from Martin Luther King. Um, I also used some very old tools. Here you see an analog or a pair of ARP synthesizers that I used for it. Uh, and used a speech database and really just tried to make something that was sort of a subtext to keep the user listening while Martin Luther King was speaking. And this was also the first video that was made because my friend Lane Clark heard the piece and said, I have to make music for this. And he decided that the technique should be something incredibly detailed so he actually painted on slides, little 35 millimeter slides, because he thought for some reason because of the music that he had to do something that was very fine, detailed, tiny artworks. Um, just a detail, but I think it's a very beautiful uh, slides that he came up with. The longest movement and the center movement of the piece is called Eternal Dream or Evik Trum. Uh, and it's a, a kind of a strange piece because it's not centered around a text. It's centered around a bunch of different quotes and a bunch of samples from voices and drums, but it doesn't have an understandable through text. It's mostly actually nonsense Swedish poetry. And uh, it took quite a long time to re realize the music and also the video. And my student, my former graduate student, Lance Putnam, used something called the Rapture Pattern Generator to make the video. Um, it was originally a piece written for the Krev movement in Sweden and then expanded. It uses materials from older pieces of mine and also, as I mentioned, Swedish nonsense poetry and speak and spell voices. So that most of the text is, is in fact nonsense. But this plays the role of the celebration of the mass in a traditional mass. The credo is a part of every mass where you speak the creed. 
And in this case, I'm using the creed of Mohandas Gandhi, whom we call Mahatma Gandhi, together with whale songs. So um, this also took several years to, to process the voice of Gandhi and then process the whale songs to go with it. It's a song form in three parts and used quite a lot of software. And then the video uh, was done using a ray tracing program and it's not important uh, other than that it took about six CPU years of processor time to render the video because it's very involved. And the last movement, what would normally be the benediction of the mass is a piece called Ora Penso in Vece Che Il Mondo, which is uh, based on a quote from Umberto Eco. I hope you love the late novelist Umberto Eco. And I decided to do a piece for string quartet and electronic piano, so MIDI, MIDI controlled piano. So it's very traditional, we would call it a piano quintet. And the problem was that the piano part is impossible to play. So I had to have a MIDI controlled piano and a live string quartet. Um, again, it's a, a fairly simple song form, but both the piano parts and the uh, string parts are extremely difficult. And actually, even though it's supposed to be a simple, pretty song, it's very difficult for them to play. So this is just a picture of the actual recording with the computer controlled piano and live string quartet. Uh, now I'd like to just talk a little bit about the tools that I used during the realization. Uh, not in great detail, but look at, I guess, the variety of different tools. Uh, during the 1990s, I worked on several pieces that used process speech. And so I built a, a set of tools for dealing, for working in speech, taking speech apart, analyzing speech. And I built a database called 8S uh, for a piece called Sleeping Sword and Sensing Speaking Space, which were two pieces that I did earlier. And then had a, these tools in Smalltalk and other tools in Super Collider that I used together. Um, whoop, oh, it's playing some sound to go along with this, which I'm not sure how to pause, but I'll talk over it. This is just an example of the Smalltalk tools. Uh, this is an example of one of the earlier pieces using that speech database. Um, and I don't think I have to go into detail there. I also worked on several different tools where we were doing feature extraction from music. In other words, listening to a piece of music and trying to figure out where are the notes, where are the pauses, and that fed into several of the pieces of Sleep, Secrets, Dreams, Faith, and Wonder. Uh, this is just another screenshot from the Siren environment, which is a small talk programming environment for music. Again, for speech reconstruction, I built a set of tools a long time ago in the 90s um, for, this is a, an example of something for tension relaxation trees. I'll spare you the code examples. Uh, this is an example of actually processing Gandhi's voice where you can take a voice and just change the prosody, change the emphasis of the voice. Here's an example from the Rapture Generator from Lance Putnam that I mentioned. Uh, here are some frames, so the same piece of software continuously moving through a space for 20 minutes. And these are just four different frames of the space that you're in. So it's a 20 some minute piece with no edits. It's a continuously rendered uh, video. Here are some of the early pictures of the graphics for Credo. Um, you'll see something that looks like this. Uh, what was very important was having scenes that were obscured by mirrors behind the glasses. So there was a lot of, there are a lot of things in the video. Well, like what you see here on the right, that there's something behind, but it's being covered up by things. Um, the last part of this credo was these Kalabi Yao manifolds, these shapes from physics uh, that I won't go into detail about. 
Uh, the mixing was done using traditional mixing tools. Um, the video compression was very difficult. And uh, I think I'll just summarize here by saying, you're gonna be seeing a screening and I'm grateful that you listen to this overview. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for your talk. I really appreciate the time that you spent for this talk. And well, we as Festival Exurbanos, we thank Stephen Pope for being here and to accept our invitation to participate in this festival edition. And of course, we thank Festival Inc. Monterrey and Laboratorio Arte AC for giving us the opportunity to have this event this year. Okay, and now let's let's watch and listen to the piece.
I have not lost faith. I'm, I'm not, not in despair. Because I know that there is a moral order. Don't let anybody make you think God shows America as his divine messianic force to be. A sort of policeman of the whole. God has a way of standing before the nation with judgment and it seems that I can hear God saying to America. That I can hear God saying to America. You are too arrogant. You don't change your way. I will rise up and bring to the backbone of your house. No lie can live with him. We must rapidly begin to shift from a thing oriented society to a person oriented society. When machines and computers, property motives and property rights are considered more important than people. Giant triplets of racism, militarism, and economic exploitation are incapable of being conquered.
Du vet, ingen har dött av kärlek. Ingen har dött av kärlek. Who have been 
after real enemies of all we hate. Such testimony is to be found in the experiences of the unspoken line of prophets and sages in all countries and times. in his own person, test the fact of God's presence, can do so by a living being. The safest course is to believe in the moral development of the world, and therefore in the supremacy of the moral law, the law of truth and love. I confess that I have no argument to convince through reason. Which transcends reason.